Aha! You're still trapped! Even though we've all been squashed together after loading my file, you still cannot escape me! Uh, yeah, until I do this. Welcome back to The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Let's see if I can- Yes, I have trapped another NPC! Yes, I am the bane of walking routines! I'm sorry. So, last time we met a very, very interesting character, shall we say. Yeah, we're totally not going to be seeing him again. Yeah, who am I kidding? Of course we are. Someone that weird who was also a member of our party with a full augment set up. He's obviously going to become more important later. But for now, uh, we're kind of stuck on leads at the moment. But I guess we can go in and report to Legrand what we learned. Well, all we really found out is the Sky Bandits are likely responsible, and General Morgan is a jerk. Well, you said it. Yeah, good thing Olivier was there to out-weird the whole situation. Otherwise, that could have ended way worse. They did have cells in that uh, facility. Yeah, good to know that not all of the higher-ups in the army hate braces that much. But unfortunately, the one in charge of this region just happens to be a bracer hater, so... That's gonna make things tough. Yeah, the burglaries we read about in the newspaper, the hijacking, the incident at Roland, it's all points of the Capua family. True, they'd be risking far greater punishment if they got caught for something like that. So why are they suddenly going for such a big and risky prospect? Anyway, there are actually a few new side quests available. Bear Claw Survey, Neville Valley Monster, and West Bows Monster. Neville Valley Monster and Bear Claw Survey both require us to go to Neville Valley. Uh, this doesn't actually specify it, but yeah, they're in Neville Valley. You might also notice that Ravenue Valley Monster has changed its timing to short. Before I talk about that though, the next thing we have to do to progress the plot is to head to the Mayor's house. Hey, I know you two! Still trying to get photos of everyone I see. <laughs> oh, that's digging yourself even deeper. That's digging yourself all the way to the center of the earth. <laughs> Lyle is a pretty great character, too. <laughs> She's also another character that I'd love to hear voice acted. Just like how completely deadpan she is all the time. <laughs> well, thankfully we've got a little bit more pleasant company for you, Lila. Yeah, and we sort of have bad news. <laughs> She's pretty dedicated. Yet another person to add to the long list of people to never get on the bad side of in this game.
Well, I guess we may as well report to the mayor about what just happened. You're not really saying much more. Let's just go straight up to see the mayor. Yeah, obviously, goods and deliveries are being delayed all over the place now. <laughs> and so, the job of the mayor that you rarely get to see in games. Even in Animal Crossing, you don't really do much paperwork in that one game with your mayor. Well, we found out a little something, but... We had a bit of an incident. Clear picture of the situation. Morgan is a bracer-hating jerk, and we're kind of screwed in that sense. And we're on a bit of a time limit if there's a ransom demand. You know, I get the feeling he didn't really know much more. Yeah, if we've got a better idea of the culprits behind these robberies, it might be easier to defend the city. Yeah, so we know what they look like. Well, we know what two of them look like at least, so we'll be on the lookout for them. That is very true. I mean, as they say, when Cassius Bright gives you the finger, he's telling you how many seconds you have left to live. <laughs> yeah, I will admit I actually stole that from a list of Chuck Norris facts, but I actually think it's appropriate here. like his reputation precedes him yet again. It's like the one person on this continent who doesn't know of his achievements is his own daughter. Looks like there's even more going on here than we realised. Once again, the one person who's clueless about his accomplishments is his own daughter. Thing is, Cassius has reasons for not talking about his past life at home. So we're kind of out of leads. Or are we? Also, I love this. <laughs> That's certainly true. story or literally starved. It actually turns out that Niall is at the bar. But 
we're not gonna talk to him just yet. Reason being, if you talk to Niall right now, then the quest Ravenue Monster will expire. So, we're actually gonna head over to Ravenue Village in West Bows and take care of that beforehand. Also, we're gonna heal here. Yeah, I know I could have just walked all the way back to the gate to heal for free, but I'm lazy. Let's also report in these two quests that we did before. Because Estelle desperately needs a new weapon, and this mirror will help us get one for her. There we go. Also, Olivier leaves his equipment in your inventory after he leaves. Feel free to sell his gun. I'll explain why later. Okay, so Estelle now has the stun rod, she's equipped Olivier's work boots. She also has the leather jacket that he left behind. I also bought a second leather jacket for her. And Joshua has an additional lighter that I bought. I'm gonna need those a little bit later, just not quite now. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to equip them. Well, you're certainly a great work colleague. Okay, so I have a whole heap of Time Seepers, so I might as well get more Action 1 and Cast 1. While I'm here, I'll get a second Defense 1 as well. Okay, so I think I'm all set. Let's head out to the West Bows Highway. Now, there's actually one chest uh, on this, this road, weirdly enough. So, I'm obviously gonna have to... I know it's like on, like, towards the side somewhere. Also, Estelle is very close to leveling up, so I want to fight a few things to make sure that I get that. Because the monster on this road can be a little bit tough. Speaking of monsters, here's a new one. This monster has a very unfortunate name. Rock Pecker. Yeah. Well, at least it's a kind of bird. I think it does actually resemble a kind of real-life bird as well. But anyway, they have this kind of strange move where they can sometimes go to sleep, and then when they wake up, they get buffed. Other than that, I'm not really sure we'll be seeing them do anything too drastic. Especially not when they're fainted like that. At the moment, I found myself a little bit short on Wind Seepeth. Which is kind of interesting, because Wind Seepeth was very common back in Rollins, while here, Earth Seepeth seems a lot more common. There is a reason for that. In fact, uh, yeah, we've already seen it on the map. The tower in this region is the Anvil Tower, the one of Earth. Anyway, here's the one and only chest in this area. The chest is empty. So very empty. And we don't have to worry about chests anymore for the rest of this road. So on our way to that monster, I can just talk about something that I kind of want to rant about a little bit. The Ravenue Village Monster Quest was labelled as long in terms of duration. Now, the Ingredient Seeker Request was also labelled as long, but the Ravenue Monster Quest expires after we talk to Niall. <laughs> Not even Cheryl leveled up. And she gets a new craft, Bind Whip. But anyway, uh, it expires after we talk to Niall now. When does... When does the Ingredient Seeker request expire? At the end of the chapter! Yeah, that's one thing that I don't like about this game. In, like, they're not very consistent when it comes to, like, the expiration dates for quests. Short, medium, and long just don't give enough information. Anyway, there's a new enemy here, Boiled Egger G. In my opinion, one of the strangest RPG enemies of all time. A weird egg-based monster. These things can cast wind-based art, and they're weak to fire, they also self-destruct, so you want to kill them from a distance. They're not really all that bad in groups of one. And there's the explosion. Seems 
One interesting thing about this game is that often when you see a new enemy, you'll encounter it in a group of one, and then uh, later encounters with it will have multiples of it. Kind of an interesting way to ease you in like that. These things also tend to notice you from quite far away. Alright, I forgot to explain Bind Whip. Bind Whip is a single targeting attack, but it cancels the enemy's arts and crafts. Something that I actually will say about that is that, yes, crafts can be cancelled in this game in addition to arts, but which crafts can be cancelled is a little bit, um, well, yeah, crafts that are used instantaneously can't be cancelled. There are some enemies in this game that will actually charge up for crafts, those ones can be cancelled, but anything that is instantaneous can't be. And the instantaneous ones greatly outnumber the ones that give you warning. Okay, you might be thinking, Rabbit New Village was all the way back there, why am I going this way? Well, uh, there is a purpose to this, and that's because we'll probably see it... Oh, actually two purposes. So, yeah, here is where Shining Palms are in this region. Thing is though, I kind of doubt that I'll be able to kill one here, and I don't really want to waste my, uh, my S-Crafts. Hmm. Maybe I should make a save. Okay, 50% strength up and a critical turn. This could work. Okay, hopefully this is enough. I think I'll actually S break with Shara on this turn. I don't know if that'll be enough. Okay, good, it's gone. That was all I needed. If I had opened another slot on Joshua's current line, I could have given him Shadow Spear, which would really help here, and I could potentially take down multiple Shining Ponds with that in this one fight, but as it stands... Well, you're probably getting away, but I sort of want to just farm a little bit of CP while you're still here. Because if I run, I'm actually going to get nothing from this fight, so obviously I don't want to do that. You, are, you really want to stay here, don't you? Funny, when I want them to run, they don't. There we go. The ones here are worth a bit more in terms of experience, at least comparatively. And a lot of Seepeth, nice. Something to note is that if you manage to get a Seepeth upturn against Shining Palms, you actually don't need to kill them to get the Seepeth. So you can just use a Stell's S-Craft in one of those turns, and they'll drop like 50 or so of every Seepeth, and even if they run, you'll still get it. So, I'm looking for... where is that enemy? There it is! Okay, that's the West Bows monster. So, this thing is very tough if we're fighting it this early, but it is doable, especially if you get lucky with faints. For this, this is why I actually got a second Earth Quartz, because I want Stone Hammer on as many characters as possible. This thing is heavily weak to Earth, so... Yeah, I obviously need to get rid of something else. Uh, I'll keep Cast. Okay, so I have Earth on Shera and Estelle. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you're starting at all in this fight, because this thing only has one attack and it hits the entire field. 
So you do want a lot of healing items for this, and I definitely want to save, not just because this is a fairly tough fight, but also because this thing actually has a quartz drop, and unlike the wisdoms, I really want to make sure I get this. The only way you can get this quartz during this chapter is as a random drop from this thing specifically, and obviously it's not really fightable. So even if I win this fight, I may have to restart anyway. So, okay, just go for stone hammer, that's really all we can do at this point. Like I said, this thing only has one attack, World Shaker. It hits everyone on the field for very large amounts of damage. You can also inflict blind, but that doesn't matter when we're casting magic on and not physical attacks. Uh, let's just go for... yeah, let's just spam Soul Blur. Basically, at this point in the game, our real strategy is to just get lucky with Faint. And good, we got Faint. That's pretty good, effective. And here's Stone Hammer. This leads me to another point, so Earth Magic. You might have noticed that I haven't used Earth Magic very much in this game. That's because Earth Magic is actually pretty terrible cost-effectiveness-wise for its damage. For the most part, most offensive Earth Magic is pretty bad in this game. I can probably try out the Sweet Sponge Cake too, actually. For that speed increase. There's exactly one good Earth spell. The rest uh, either just cost way too much for... Uh, and have way too long of a cast time for um, how little damage and how much EP they cost. Or... I don't know. They, they, uh, most Earth arts are just pretty terrible. Stone Hammer, though, is pretty much the same as most other first tier arts. Okay, it's gonna be attacking next. Hmm. I don't have any S crafts ready either. I don't think Estelle will go down, but just to make absolutely sure, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to Sponge Cake Estelle. Because it does like a little over 200 with that attack, so. Yeah. It might potentially finish her off. If I hadn't healed her. I think we should be set though. Yeah, especially if Cher is casting this fast. So yeah, in summary, Earth Arts in this game are generally not worth it unless the enemy is weak to them. There is an exception though. The second tier single target Earth spell is tied with the second tier single target water spell for the most cost efficient for its damage single target art in the game. Okay, good, the chest drops. And I'm pretty sure there's only one thing you can potentially get dropped from this thing. Yep, Evade 2. You want to make sure that you get that drop. Because, you know what Evade 2 means? It means we can have two people with Ariel. And obviously that's amazing. With all that done, let's head to Ravenue Village for our second monster extermination. After we go through the Ravenue Trail, now this area is not very interesting. It doesn't have any chests, and only a couple of new enemies. These things are also kind of easy to get hit by preemptive strikes from. And missed horribly, yeah. This thing is a Chukacabra. Pretty sure that's not exactly what a Chukacabra is in terms of mythology, but uh, yeah. Also, I forgot Joshua finished that fight very, very weakened. I should probably heal him, just to be safe. I was saying these things are another drain type monster. They're having a really bad time with accuracy though. And gone. Once again, we're a little short on Wind Seep of dropping enemies in this chapter. Almost everything here drops Earth and Mirage or variants of that. I'm just going to try my best to skip most of the other enemies here. There's not really much reason to fight, and there being no chests in this area, really not much reason to linger. Because if we head through here, after this very long straight path, welcome to Ravenue Village. A small town close to the mountains. We'll actually be going here for the purposes of the story anyway later on, but in order to do this quest, we have to come here early. The orchard actually supplies a lot of what's sold at the market. Old abandoned mine! Well, yeah, those are always important in games like this.
So she did pretty much the same thing that we're doing right now. Let me guess, that was Cassius Bright? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, you need to be familiar with all routes and all forms of transport. If you're just used to one thing, it might be tough to take on all jobs. While we're here, some kids have a few interesting things to say. No, we're not quite merchants. But we also have the inn here, the Moonlight Path, which is such a cool name for an inn. We can rest here to heal. The main point of note here is that this lady upstairs is in the process of getting everything ready. We can't buy food here just yet. I'm going to go ahead and heal too. You want to keep the Moonlight Path in mind for later though, because let's just say the food there is going to be pretty amazing and very useful for something. Okay, so what we actually need to do here is we need to go to the village elder's house. Yes, we thankfully did because it's just about to expire. Well, that doesn't bode well. You, your miners must have either been really good themselves or needed really good bodyguards. This monster extermination request is a bit more involved than the previous one. And the guy at the gate is the reason why we need to talk to this guy in particular. Because if we don't talk to the Elder, we're not going to be let past. There's also a graveyard in here. Here rest the souls of six righteous people who lost their lives in the flames of war. Leif, Abel, Nicole, Wilhelm, Irina, and Misha. You also have a little house here that's locked. Oh no, don't worry, we have permission from the Elder. We're actually here to deal with your little monster problem. Yeah, that's probably why this one has a very short time limit. I still wish there was a better system of, like, explaining when the deadlines for quests are, because the short, medium, and long ones, like I said, they're just a little bit vague. Like, long can mean a lot of different things. There are actually chests on this half of the of the Ravenue Trail, though. So, here we go. Tear Balm. The chest is empty. But it wouldn't be empty if you put something in it. Ah, uh, let's not just lose one of our items just to satisfy that message. If you look at the map, it should be fairly obvious where they'd hide chests here. Deathblow 2. This is a very interesting quartz. Reduce the surging empty chests? That's really sad. I'll talk about Deathblow 2 in a moment, because first we have this thing, which is actually a new enemy type. Two of them. Roly Poly. Kind of funny, because there's, um, as of recording, there's just recently been a Pokemon reveal that's kind of similar to this thing. Multi-legged arthropod that spews poisonous gas. The gas that ejects a range of effects. It's very similar to the, to the mist monsters back in the Mistwald Forest. Can I catch? Yes, I can catch both of them in Aerial. Speaking of Aerial... Double Aerial all the way! 
heavy winds in the forecast. And we didn't need both of them. Speaking of wind, these things actually do drop wind seepers, which is kind of nice. But yeah, the Death Blow 2 Quartz. It doesn't have any elemental value. 100% kills enemy, but Quartz breaks. The description pretty much says it all. Now, in my first playthrough, I never used any of those, because I thought that everything worthwhile would be immune to them. This is not actually true. For one, the vast majority... Hi there. As I was saying, the vast majority of side quest monsters are not immune to Death Blow 2. So think of that quartz as a one-use get out of side quest monster free card. Beast steak, that's actually a recipe. Nope, still empty. I may as well eat this now. Who wants CP? to learn that recipe, because beef steak is actually not that hard to make. Just requires kibbled salt, black pepper, and beast flesh. Beast flesh is very common, and the, and the other two ingredients are very cheap to buy. Beast steak is kind of useful to have, because it's a food item that raises CP. I said earlier in the game that there would be other ways to raise CP, apart from, uh, from just getting hit and dealing damage in battle. Yeah, food is one of those ways. Certain recipes boost CP, and that can be very useful. It's pretty much the only way to fully top up your CP before a boss fight. So, yeah, if you know a boss is coming, it might be useful to stock up on that kind of food. Speaking of knowing a boss is coming, by the way, you want to be very, very careful when you enter the second screen of the Northern Ravenue Trail, because, well, I'm going to go ahead and save here. I'm not going to be using Death Blow 2 in this fight because I want to save my de my first Death Blow 2 for something a little later in this chapter. Okay, no chest in there. Right, I believe about... Yep, right here. Because this side quest monster is a clever girl. It ambushes you the moment that you try and enter the middle part of this area. This is the Fate Spinner. It spins a tail without end and it makes your new life draw its last breath. A large monster lurking in the mountains attacks with surprising speed for its size. That really doesn't bode well. No weaknesses apart from a resistance to fire, so it doesn't really matter what you use against it. I think I'll actually go straight for Hellgate. Leap upon. Yes! Did you notice the aura going away there? That attack cancels your spell casting. In fact, the first instance of art cancelling we've actually seen in this game. I'm going to be using Aerial here because it doesn't have any longer cast time than anything else, and it does more damage. So yeah, if you are going to be casting magic against this thing, you want to be doing it before it gets its turn. Kind of funny that we haven't encountered an Impede attack until now. I mostly know the Fate Spinner because this same thing actually does show up in Cold Steel, or at least enemies that look very similar. Okay, unfortunately did not get faint there. That could end badly, because I think Joshua might be in kill range of another hit. Uh, I could try and unload. Okay, if this fails, we're not going to get another, another turn for ages. So, this whole emergency S-break unloading, don't always count on this. It's really just a panic button more than anything. But, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to finish it off. And I will not skip this animation because, yes, I have run afoul of this glitch off camera at least once in this game. Sometimes if you skip Joshua's s from the Steam version, it just doesn't do damage, and I really don't know why. That's that. Let's move anyway, that looked kind of easy. That is very much a kill it quickly or be killed quickly kind of boss. It is very, very dangerous if you give it free reign. Especially since it can ambush you when you least expect it. Yeah, looks like that's a Tremor Sense type monster. 
Yeah, good thing it didn't get the jump on someone with no combat training. That would have been really bad. So, Revenue Monster has been exterminated. But I think... There's one more chest at least to get here. Oh, also Rock Peckers are still here. Yep, I thought there's one more chest. Tear Ball. I am error. Funny thing is, a lot of people use that in the context of like computer errors whenever they reference that, but no. The guy who said that was literally named error, and he has a friend named Bug, so obviously it was just theme naming. I still love the line though. Bagu is my name. Show this note to Riverman. While we're here, I might as well show the abandoned mine. There is nothing we can do here just yet, because if we try and enter, it is locked with a heavy chain. But I just wanted to show that it is up here. Nothing else to do in Ravenue Trail, so I might as well head back to town. Okay, we solved the monster problem. That didn't look too bad, but like I said, that monster is definitely a case of either you or it will die very quickly. You saw how hard it hit Joshua. We'll actually be enjoying the village a lot more a little later on in this chapter. For now, there's not much for us to do here. Guess we can check in with the Elder and see how he's doing. Yeah, you don't actually need to report back to the Elder. But he has a bit of extra dialogue for you if you do. Uh, nice to know we're always welcome in this town, especially because the Moonlight Path is about to sell something very, very, very useful. He 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 he, I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, there's actually a general goods store here too. Wait, Emil General Goods? Don't tell me, this guy is going to be saying puns every three seconds, isn't he? Again, remember the ripe apple for later. Okay, so with that... We've completed most side quests we can do at this point. Next time, I'm going to be taking on more side quests. More specifically, a side quest that's actually not on this list. We'll be taking on our first hidden side quest. There are not many in this game, but the few that exist, you want to make sure you do them as soon as possible. And this one, well, I don't want to spoil what it involves. I think I'll just end in Ravenue Village for now, the nice relaxing atmosphere, but I will be back in Bows next time I start, so I'll see you there.